good evening. I just want you to know that it gives me no pleasure at all to be sitting here in this damn record. Surrounded by these imps of Satan and whore masters. Talk to you a lot of unrepentant sinners. Hedonistic hellhounds, a lot of you sitting out there and your fat bums. <laughs> Refreshing your private parts with your lager. <laughs> reaches all the other places that beers can't reach. <laughs> Surrounded by your wall to wall carpets and your freezers and your dishwashers and your electric light, I'd burn the lot of them, I'd offer you. <laughs> Boggling this hellish box, this infernal invention of Satan, gloating over the corruption of Coronation Street, the carnality of Crossroads. And what about that children's programme? Blue Peter. <laughs> That's you, I'm top. <laughs> I saw you taking another swig of that stuff. Put it down. And Mick, don't you dare leave the room and make tea while I'm on. <laughs> All for hell and damnation the lot you, except maybe those that kept their eyes shut till I come on. <laughs> Leave me, I'm I'm dumbfounded at the wickedness which pervades our society, even in where I live, Arnashuch. <laughs> oh god, the sinners we have there, especially the youngsters, what with their hair frizzed up and their makeup and their earrings and their beads doing ruin their necks, and the lassies are just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the drinking and the gambling. <laughs> I could scarce believe it when I heard the old Tom Caldwell had turned his buyer into a bingo hall. I'm told that if it wasn't for the smell, he'd be making a fortune. <laughs> I went up there the other night to see for myself, and oh, the shame, the disgrace. I won the snowball. <laughs> the wickedness in Ardna Shuck, you just wouldn't believe fornicating. Fornicate at least two or three times a year. <laughs> wife swapping, wife swapping, I'm telling you. I'm told Jimmy Anderson got a second hand bike for his last week. <laughs> Mind you, I can see how a good man can so easily be deflected from the path of righteousness by the temptations of the flesh. <laughs> Take old Sandy McCulloch, he was our bell puller. Now, by their bell, you never heard pulp. A good man who lived a solitary bachelor's life like myself. Worked in the fields all day, came home and made himself some stewed rhubarb for his supper. <laughs> Went to his bed and he was up at the crack at five in the morning. <laughs> Mind you, when you take stewed rhubarb for your supper. <laughs> Well, got to be up at five. <laughs> Every Saturday, he would buy himself a quarter of mint imperials, and though he was passionately fond of mint imperials, he wouldn't touch a single one till he pulled his bells. <laughs> he was settled in his pew in the cup. Now it came to pass that a widow woman came to live next door to Sandy, a painted, scheming hussy, if ever I saw one. <laughs> well, I first set eyes on her as she hung out her, 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 her smalls. <laughs> Small, so and one Monday that was. Oh, he was he was struck by the appearance of blonde hair, painted fingernails, and great big clothes poles. <laughs> well, on the Tuesday she said hello to him over the back wall, dressed in a kind of flimsy neg ledge. <laughs> she was showing everything that God gave her, and my God, God had been abundant. <laughs> Wednesday, on Wednesday, she came to his door to borrow a cup of sugar. Didn't have a grain in the place, she said. No sugar. On the Thursday, she asked him if he'd come in and fix her bully. But it was her that got up the ladder and Sandy had to hold it for her. Well, when he looked up, what do you think he saw? You're right, a two-pound packet of sugar. <laughs> started having stewed rhubarb together in the evening. And did that cause the traffic's from at five in the morning? 
go and look at the land between them and it's outside. And the Friday she asked him in for supper. She laid on his favourite dinner. Smokies washed down with sparkling lucasy. <laughs> well, I went straight to Sandy Seed and then the scheming Jesse. Asked him if he'd let him into Imperial and let him into the bedroom where she kept him in a beautiful hand-carved ivory box on her bedside. I lay down in the bed and she kissed him. Such a kiss it was. Sandy was absolutely speechless. Both his dentures had come out. <laughs> well, she was wearing one of these dresses that fastened with a single brooch and a suitor. Sandy, now out of his mind with passion and desire, he took her in his arms. His left arm went round and his hand straight to the clasp, and before she knew what he was doing, he was away with Hoffer Imperial. <laughs> Didn't he speak all day Saturday? And then on Sunday, the brazen hussy comes up and offers to pull his bells for him. <laughs> you take it from me, it's the end when a single man lets a woman near his bells. <laughs> and that was his downfall. They got themselves merit in Glasgow, for I wouldn't have touched them. <laughs> well, what consideration did he have for me? I've no wife, and with him going, I've got to pull my own bells. <laughs> Oh, and as I think of them now, away there in Majorca, <laughs> drinking and gambling and fornicating. I can only think of the one thing. I wish I'd hoff his luck. <laughs>